All right, are we ready? Yes. I'm ready. Cheers. 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 <laughs> I like you, Jess Cup. What is that? Healthy? You gotta, little... do, you gotta do the label out too. Let's do the little clink clink. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, it sounds hollow. Not the same. So a couple months ago, I did an outer sleeve on my client. With that being said, I'm gonna tell you guys a story about Buddha. I, I need to. I need to give you guys some some juicy. Is he a guy or is he a god? Hold on, relax, my dude. Hey. Is that a valid question? It's a valid question. It's gonna be in there. It's so. gonna be interesting. Buddha means the awakened one. He was an ordinary person named Siddhartha Watama, mm. whose profound insights inspire the world. Insights. Insights. Mm. Whose profound insights. <laughs> ins profound insights. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> what did I say? His insides. <laughs> <laughs> Intestines and <laughs> shit. <laughs> Let me say that one more time. Profound. Again. Whose profound insights inspire the world. Mm. Yes. Siddhartha Watama was born in 623 BC in the famous garden of Lumini, Nepal. 600 BC. Beautiful place, I heard. No, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> so Sounds like, like <laughs> me. I was just like, what place did you just say? <laughs> yeah, I'm still trying to get over I didn't the. Hear I'm still trying to get over the name. <laughs> 600 BC. Okay. Mm. 600 years before Jesus Christ happened. Oh. Okay. It's a lot of okay. years. He was the son of a king and he was born into wealth. Oh, he was okay. rich. He was rich. It's covering your beautiful face. He was rich with a lot of passion. No, rich. he was just rich with a lot of kindness. No. Maybe? No. Just rich. He was just rich. Mm. When he was born, Mm. The king, as any other father, wanted to know what does the future hold for my son? So the king consulted a yogi to predict the future of his son. And the yogi said that he will either become a great emperor or a great sage. And a sage, uh, it's a profound philosopher. Who's the other not guy? A very, not a very great yogi. <laughs> it's not, it's not you accurate. Ask me, like, <laughs> someone tell, comes and be like, I'm gonna tell you your future. You're either rich or you're either broke. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who's the other guy that, uh, that it was? The father? No, it's like another Buddha. Is there many Buddhas? So Are we backtracking, fool? With Bro, that? I, 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 just I, wait. wait. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Okay. We have no idea who this one is. Okay. I'm, I'm barely starting. Caught up. That's, like yeah, that's as far as you need to know. <laughs> I'm here to learn. So, uh, as any other, because his dad is royalty. Hey, relax. What <laughs> we just got started. What are you doing? <laughs> Never really got it. I suck at history. Oh, that's what I'm trying to make it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had you as my teacher. <laughs> the good part is That's some dirty thoughts. Stop it. <laughs> my high school teacher. All right. Well, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'm going to get a hall pass. Or professor. <laughs> oh, damn. Concentrate. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Because his dad was royalty, he needed him to become a great emperor. Like, there was no question. Like, this dude, my son, gotta be the next king up in here. So the king wanted him to become a great emperor. He thought by being exposed to some suffering, misery, he may turn into a sage. So his dad didn't want him to experience any suffering, misery. Wait, what are you doing? <laughs> what? <laughs> This is just really your baby's popping out. What this is, is going this on? is really connecting with her? <laughs> this is hitting on all the, the all the chakras. <laughs> I think this is a, this is an awakening for her. This I know. She's reaching enlightenment. <laughs> she is reaching enlightenment. What is in that? What is in that container? Not, I don't know at this point. I thought it was like some hydrating like powder. <laughs> Turns out it was tequila. We <laughs> must have got the same drink. <laughs> You got a drink. <laughs> Cheers. Hey, man. I'm going to repeat the whole thing one more time. Well, not the whole thing. Not from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I got a little dizzy out here. <laughs> and we'll take a break. We go on pause back, out here. Back <laughs> to from a commercial break. <laughs> the king wanted him to become a great emperor. He thought that by being exposed to some suffering or misery, he may turn into a sage. So because you, if you, if his son was experiencing misery mm -hmm. and suffering, mm. he might be like, you know what? I think I want to be a sage instead of an emperor. So he kept him in the palace for years with the best food, clothes, and pleasure. He was showing him like everything that's great about being an emperor. Also, he didn't want him to see the outside. What? Because the outside is nothing but misery and suffering. Mm. So he kept them in the palace for years and years. When he was 16 years of age, his father got him married to a very young princess and later had a son. You know what's uh, kind of cringy about the person that Buddha married? It was the cousin. Oh, I, oh. I, I was going to say, it's usually... <laughs> Keep it in the family. A la prima se la rima. Oh, no. Prince Siddhartha was 29 years old when his life changed. He snuck out of the palace to go outside and explore. He said, I'm going outside. I'm going to sneak out. Like, I'm tired of being in this palace. Old ass grown man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 29? <laughs> Everyone's just like... parents were Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> While he was outside he, the palace, he first saw an old man. Then he followed that old man because he has never he had never seen such a thing. Then after following the, the old man, he came across a sick person. As he kept exploring, he came across a funeral with someone that was dead. He realized that his privileged status would not protect him from sickness, old age, and death. So after he realized that everybody gets to experience misery and suffering in real life, the prince left everything behind, all his royal life behind. His wife left her behind. The son left him behind. Why? He left everything. He gave away his clothes, everything he owned. He disappeared. He left. He left. That's it. Yeah, we get it. He left. <laughs> he didn't. He, he didn't write. So you're saying he, he did leave. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just want to make sure. Like I times. know. Sorry. I, I just want to. He left. To... You guys understood that, it's right? He left. He left. He left the wife he and the left son behind. The wife. He left. He just gone. <laughs> Where is that boy at? No, he's gone. gone. He left. He's gone. He left. Didn't you hear me? He, he left. left. He's gone. He began studying with other gurus. So he can understand suffering so he can gain wisdom and freedom mm. but none could answer his question they believed the way to elevate the mind and the door to wisdom was found at the age of death so in order for you to find wisdom you have to basically be almost dead that's the only way that they believe to reach and freedom and wisdom however after six years of Siddhartha fasting and going through torture to understand suffering, it wasn't working. His body just kept getting weaker and the prince only felt frustration. Eventually, he realized that the path to peace was through mental discipline. That's when he realized, I was like, I gotta get my act together. Like, it's not just fasting and going through suffering in here. He sat in meditation beneath a Bodhi tree until he was awakened and reached enlightenment. So for days and days he was under this tree and he was just meditating with his eyes closed. Oh! <laughs> I don't we miss a high five. We're gonna add that out. <laughs> Wait, so they, they didn't have prenups back then? <laughs> so they married family, right? They said like, you, they married family. She yeah. was also a prince, a princess. But like, if you wanted to- Need your money? <laughs> I wonder when the prenup was invented. So when you get married, you get a prenup? No, 100% <laughs> in. That goes to you. <laughs> so, to the future? To the future you. To the future you. <laughs> no prenup. <laughs> he sat there with determination. And I quote. Is that how you say it? And I quote. That's what you gotta do. Quote, either I must see in ultimate either i must see ultimate nature of my existence now or i will sit here until i die 
It's a weird threatening his mind. <laughs> it's like, yo. Better get there or I'll stay until I die. He's like playing chicken with God. He's like, who is going to move first? <laughs> I will not open my eyes yeah. until I know this. And he, in fact, reached enlightenment. And because of that, because of his patience, the first ever Buddha was born. So it worked? It worked. Down all the third in my mind. That's how you gotta do it. So you gain yeah, all this. We got Bernie. <laughs> we'll die. <laughs> so because now you guys know about the, the the story behind Buddha, I pulled out some interesting facts. There's mm. more. Just facts. Top that my top favorite facts that I found. Top uh -huh. twisted <laughs> facts about Buddha. Buddhism comes from Hinduism. Buddha used to practice Hinduism, so he took a few things from Hinduism religion and applied it to his own practice. Buddhism didn't exist before uh, Sanarta. So, tweak the laws a little bit. Yeah, he said, I like this from Hinduism, mm. so I'm gonna take this and apply it to my practice. Mm -hmm. And then once he became Buddha, he created Buddhism. So that leads me to my next fact. Buddhism is not a religion, it's a way of life. And is it reincarnation too, part of it, or is yes. that be pretty crazy to end up in a like a like a bee's life, in an animal's life, if you go that route? Because you could go animal, yeah, or yeah human, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. If you live it well, you become something well, and if you live it bad, you become something less than what you were in this previous life. I think that's but like the philosophy. How, how in that stage, like, what's the good and what's the bad? Um, it's like all organisms matter. Good question, <laughs> In Buddhism, they teach that life is full of suffering. Mm -hmm. And by practicing Buddhism, they can minimize the suffering that you feel. And the more you practice it, there will be a point when you reach Nirvana. Practice I'm, makes perfect. That's what they always so before, say. <laughs> so before I, re I talk about Nirvana, Basically, in Buddhism, they teach you that life is just suffering. Mm -hmm. Like, there's nothing good about life. Like, really? That's yes. very negative. It is? Not very enlightening to what it's, it started off with. And that's because it's li I'm leading up to Nirvana. Okay. So, so there's like an end goal. There's an end goal to this. So the end goal is because life is full of suffering, you keep getting reborn. You keep getting reincarnated into a different like body or uh, any living thing by following the four noble truths. There's four noble truths in the uh, that you have to follow in Buddhism. By following the four noble truths, it revolves around an understanding of why we suffer and how we end suffering. So once you reach Nirvana, you're gone forever. You stop reincarnating. Where do you go? That's it. You I think, never I think the goal is I, to just to cease to exist. I think yes. you go to the next realm. That's your ticket in. No, it's not a next round. Nothing. That's the goal. How the is goal. That? The goal is to die and never come back. Hmm. Exactly. No it's like you're just gonna suffer, suffer, suffer. But here, let us help you minimize the suffering that you're feeling while you're living, so you can reach no existence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's Buddhism. Really? Yeah. Hmm. So the first part of the Four Noble Truths is the suffering part. Understanding the suffering. So understanding the suffering is inevitable. Mm. Yeah. So it's like you're gonna you're gonna be suffering. So that that's number one. The second is the truth of the cause of suffering. So then you're like, okay, I'm suffering, but why? I'm, I'm at a good place because I know that I can control my feelings and can control and everything around me is not going to cause me any harm and that is that is the suffering that understanding why. the cause understanding the cause and you can control that like you're like okay i understand why i'm suffering i get it now what am i going to do about I it? React to it a little bit mm -hmm. therapy there right yes mm. then the third novel truth is the truth of the end of suffering so after you understand it, you're like, now I can stop it. Okay. Like, now I know that suffering is just this thing that I can stop. Yeah, okay. And the fourth one is the truth of the path that leads to the end of suffering, which is nirvana. Over time, do they, just, they try to make him a god or? No. Okay, it's so he, he always stayed like, hey, I'm not a god. He never had just, to say Just it. a way of life. 
yeah, it's a way of life. He never had to say it because it was already like known. Yeah, it was known. It, it wasn't something that they had to like pray to someone. Even the temples that they have in Nepal and Asia and all these places about Buddhism, the temples are not meant to, for you to go and like pray. pray to someone. It's just you go in there and you meditate and practice what they, the books that they give you. Because they have books and books of how to reach enlightenment and nirvana. Yeah. That's the main thing. But have some? Yeah. <laughs> but yes. Why are you wiping it? Huh? Why are you wiping it? What do you mean? You're wiping my saliva. <laughs> I, saw yeah, video, I saw a video where it says wipe your, wipe your husband's or not wipe your partner's thing to see what they would do. <laughs> what it is. <laughs> so yes. What do you guys think? <laughs> That's heavy, huh? That's interesting. That, that's interesting. It's a very interesting topic, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it's a little confusing, to yeah. be honest. I thought it was a religion. Yeah. I think I, I was, I went in thinking it was a religion. Yeah, a lot of people do think it's a religion. That's why I wanted to, like, I feel deep. like it kind of still falls under religion. It, it kind of falls under religion because at the end of the day, Buddha did take a few things from Hinduism, the religion, into yeah. his own practice. So I feel like, mm -hmm. technically, it is. It's just, for me, it's just strange. It's strange, huh? That that's the end goal to yeah. just like not exist. Mm -hmm. <laughs>